Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of Science on a Shoestring with Mr Sinnott. Try saying that one quickly three times. Uh, the idea of these investigations is to carry out some science activities and investigations using things that you might ordinarily find lying around the house. Today we're going to make a telephone, paper cup telephone that is. The word telephone is Greek in origin. Tele means far or distant, phone means voice. So put those things together and we have far away voice or distant voice. It's an appropriate name uh, for the word telephone. Television is similar in origin, tele, far, vision, to see, to see things that are far away, like a television broadcast, for example. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell was the uh, inventor of the tele telephone, shall we say. Um, he filed a, a patent for it. That's uh, a document which says, I made this, this is my design and I own it, in 1876. And it's evolved over time to the technology and the iPhones and Samsungs and all those different kinds of brands that we use today. Uh, for this investigation, I'll just move my blue Peter, here's one I made earlier, out of the way. For this investigation, you're going to need two paper cups, paper cups are ideal, a pencil, fairly sharp but not too sharp, string, scissors, and depending on how you're going to measure, you could measure to the nearest centimetre or millimetre, or you could just use your eye and say a small, medium, large string. Uh, you might need one of these depending on whether you're going to actually measure. The reason why I've chosen a tape measure is because you're more likely to find one of these lying around the house than you are a, a, a regular school ruler. So we've got to be realistic, haven't we, with, a, with what we want to achieve and how we're going to actually get there. So step one, I'll just move these bits out of the way. Step one, you're going to need your pencil and two paper cups. I'll flip them upside down, okay? Now, safety first, don't put your finger on the other side when you poke through, because you'll end up with a cut. You'll notice that mine have already got holes in already, and that's because I'd like to say that this is take one of our video, but it's not. But anyway, we'll progress. Take your pencil, pop it through, make a small hole. It doesn't have to be too big. Don't jam all the way down, we're not forcing anything through roughly in the center of each cup. Once you've done that, don't need that pencil for now. Once you've done that, you should have two holes. Now take your string. I've already measured this out and it's approximately um, two meters best that I could. You need to pull it tight to actually um, measure it correctly. Otherwise it will be much longer than what you actually thought it was if it's loose. So keep it taut, keep, keep it tight and you'll be able to uh, measure it accurately with a tape measure or if you happen to have a regular school ruler you can do it that way. Uh, the reason why I've chosen two meters is of course we're all uh, told to keep two meters away from one another at the moment aren't we and so just for health reasons more than anything else we're in the classroom we might shorten it down make it longer and you can certainly go as long as the space will allow you to do it and that's what makes it an investigation rather than just an activity when you can change some of the variables in there make it different see what happens, find your results. Does it work? Does it not work? If it didn't, why didn't it? Uh, if it did work, what? how else could you change the investigation? What other predictions could you make about it as well? That's what makes it more scientific than just a, an arts and crafts activity. So once you've cut your string to the desired length, you need to now get this string through the cup and make a knot. Well, we've all had it, haven't we, with our shoelaces and the, the plastic thing bonus point for anybody who can tell me what the little plastic thing is called. The plastic thing on the end of your shoelace breaks off over time, of course, through wear and tear. And you can't get it quite through the hole. Here's a little tip. My mum used to use a fork in my shoes, but you can use a pencil. Just push it through. Push it through. Watch your finger. Push it through. Push it through. Pull it through make a knot. Firstly, loop around your finger, knot. Now that knot might not be, might not be big enough. Be careful with knot. Knot, that type of knot is K-N-O-T. Knot, as in it might not, is N-O-T. If you pull it back through, it might pull through. This one's okay. If it does pull through, you just find the knot again, make another knot, make another knot. You can do as many as you need to. Doesn't make a difference, or does it? Maybe you could find out. Nice big knot, pull it through, quick tug, nothing too much, we're not yanking anything. 
and then repeat the same thing with the opposite uh, end of our, of our telephone. Push it through, watch your fingers. Again, if you cut anything, anything sharp, adult supervision, watch your fingers, all of these basic safety tips that are going to make it a success rather than a pain. Pull it through, knot it, knot it, knot it. Now I think that's enough, I'm going to try it. Fine, absolutely fine. And there we have it, that's our paper telephone. Now, how are we going to actually use it? Well, we need to pull the string tight as you can. To make sure that when the person is at one end, the person's at the other, you've gone all the way with the string, as far as the string will allow you to. If it's loose, well, try it and see what happens if it's loose. My prediction is that it won't work. You might find something else, something different. Give it a try, try it for yourself, see what happens. Then one person's going to talk down one end and the other person's going to hear them. Make sure that you're not so close that you can actually hear each other anyway. That defeats the object of the investigation. Nice and tight, nice and long, see how long you can go. Try different lengths of string. Um, and then speak to each other, okay? Now this is an important hygiene point now more than ever. This cup stays with one person, this cup stays with the other person. We don't swap cups, simple as that. Because you're going to be putting your mouth near that and the other person's going to be putting their ear by it. The other person might handle it. Germs, bugs get on their hands. We don't want that to happen at any time, but especially not now. So label it, label it, okay? I'm going to say this one belongs to Joe, okay? I'm going to write Joe on the bottom as well. You can write it anywhere on your cup. Just make sure that only Joe or whoever it is only uses that cup. And the other one, this other cup, could be Jane's cup. So Jane, here. I've chosen a female name because there are so many famous female scientists and I love finding out about all of the great things that female scientists have done. So Joe and Jane's cups, there we go. You can stretch them apart. You can talk to each other, see what happens. Okay, now the science that's happening here is that we have to be able to recognize that vibration from sound travels through a medium to our ears, okay? Now a medium, you might come across the word medium when you're in the shop, and that could be like a, a medium t-shirt, a small t-shirt, a large t-shirt. Medium in science is a little bit different. We've got to be careful with the vocabulary. Medium in science just means something that the sound can travel through. That could be a solid, it could be a liquid like water, it could be a gas like the air, for example. It could also travel through a plasma. That's maybe a little bit too advanced for, uh, for the work that we're doing at the moment. So as the sound travels along the string, it's going through, the vibrations of sound are traveling through this medium. And this medium, the string, is a solid. See what happens as you move further apart. Can you get that string nice and taut, nice and tight? Could you try a different medium? Maybe you could try something else instead of string. Does it still work? Does it work differently? Is it better? Is it worse? So this is what makes it more of an investigation rather than an arts and crafts activity. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe. Remember, scissors always cut away from yourself. Once you're done with them, keep them to one side. Adult supervision if required. Don't poke yourself with a pencil. Don't go in your parents' toolbox without permission. There might be sharp things in there. Stay safe. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I could do some more. And I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Science on a Shoestring with Mr. S. Thank you.